I'm thinking about this idea of the mystery. The mystery comes up in, um, well, it comes up in all kinds of weird metaphysical and theological traditions. Um, I suppose my most familiar point of contact with it is um, Douglas Harding, who I spoke about before. I used it in a pretty idiosyncratic way, actually, but it, it's, um, yeah, I'll try and come back to that if I can. But the idea of the mystery, which I personally just characterise as the unknown, I think it is, there's something really interesting about that. And I think, and it's not surprising that it does appear, I think, within like, uh, theology and metaphysics and mystical practices generally, in a way that's in a sense quite different to the way it appears in science, but not, not so different as perhaps it might first appear. Uh, and I think in a sense there's two unknowns, there's two kinds of unknown. There's the unknown which I think, which appears just after the Enlightenment in Western Europe, which is the, the unknown that contains the God of the Gaps. It's this idea that there is that there is so much knowledge in the world, there's this, that not in the universe, that knowledge is this vast but nevertheless limited a quantity of stuff or limited uh, acreage of space, if you want to switch the metaphor a bit. And the purpose of human inquiry is to, you know, process this stuff or to explore this space. Uh, and the logic of that, the logic of, uh, of knowledge as a limited resource or as a defined area of space, is that there's only so much of it. So the more you know, the less there is that you don't know. I mean, that's, you know, like, if you've got, uh, you know, a barrel of apples and you take some apples out, the more apples you take out, the less apples are in the barrel. It's the same kind of logic. The more you know, the less unknown there is. And that's uh, that's the, the, the kind of epistemological logic behind... Uh, the God of the Gaps argument. If the unknown is where God is in traditional in a traditional sense, then the more you find out, the more because the, the more known there is, the less of this unknown space there is for God and angels and all that kind of crap to hide in. So the uh, so that was one of the the arguments against God that comes out post Enlightenment. That the more we find out, the less space there is for God. Therefore. God is, is kind of shrinking in this tiny little gap and eventually be winked out altogether. Uh, but that changes, I think, under, with modern understandings of what the unknown is and how knowledge works. Because modern understandings of knowledge don't configure it as a limited resource or as a, a finite bounded area of, of uh, metaphorical space that we're exploring. In a, a modern understanding of knowledge is that it's it's not created as such, but it is. But it, it isn't. It isn't finite. And the more you know, or the more we know collectively, the more um, opportunity we create to find more out, to create, to, to create and, uh, and generate new knowledge. And the image I have of this, just to put against this apples in barrels and exploring of finite spaces, the image I have of this uh, is something like the Koch snowflake. The Koch snowflake is a, is a fractal figure, quite well known one. It's very simple. You just you can draw one. You just draw a triangle on a piece of paper. Oh, the wind's picking up. You draw a triangle on a piece of paper. That on each of the lines of the triangle, you draw another triangle half the size of the original, and then you do the same thing with each of those three triangles you draw, and then so on and so on and so on. And you can do that uh, to infinity, effectively, uh, and it's, it becomes a, it's a fractal figure. Uh, but what's interesting about it is the total amount of space on the page that the drawing takes up doesn't really increase much after the first couple of iterations. It doesn't spill over the size of the paper and fill the room with triangles, because each triangle is, is half the size of the previous one, so it, it doesn't actually take up surface area. But the, uh, the perimeter of the shape, the outside edge of the, of the snowflake image that you're drawing, that does increase. It gets more and more complex, more and more crenellated. And in theory, if you uh, if you keep expanding this and keep doing this this fractal um, progression on this Scotch snowflake, the the outside perimeter becomes uh, well approaches infinity. And the reason why I think that's a really interesting metaphor for for the unknown, the known and the unknown and the mystery, if you like, is that. Uh, 
rather than, than this space being colonised, so eventually there, the, there is no more unknown left. The unknown is what lies beyond the perimeter of this, exp of this infinitely complex Koch snowflake. So the more you know, the more you add to the snowflake by reiterating fractal progressions on it, the, the longer the outside edge goes, the more, the, the greater the border with the unknown. Uh, which is a bit chastening in some ways, I suppose. Uh, it's, it's not a comforting enlightenment model of the unknown, of the universe as a place where we'll eventually find out everything there is to know and we can kind of relax and put our feet up for the rest of eternity. It's more uh, a knowledge that the universe is going to endlessly present more stuff to us to know because of our, and that's, and the moreness is generated by our acts of finding things out. So the mystery, if you like, which is often capitalised in mystic writings, I think is something more akin to that than the God of the Gaps mystery. It's more of akin to a, of a, an unknown that increases in size and potential and kind of pregnant weirdness the more that you know about it. I mean, I'm not saying that's an excuse to fetishise it. I mean, a lot of mystic writings, I think, fetishise the mystery, make it a capital, put a face on it, you know what I mean? And, uh, and turn it into an object of worship and reverence. And I'm not saying that. But I do say, I am saying, I suppose, that uh, a, a, an, un, a, an unknownness that is constantly expanding does trigger a different kind of relationship, or is worthy of a different kind of relationship to the um, knowledge as a barrel of a diminishing apples model.